Hello and welcome to Marketing Now and Next, a three-part mini-series from The Drum and Think with Google. I'm Jenny Baker, The Drum's Senior Editor, and over this series, I'll be putting marketing and creative leaders in the spotlight to uncover what's on their minds now in 2023 and next in 2024 and beyond as we explore and unpack practical advice and insights on how to build better marketing for the future. Oh, James, hello. Hello. As um, Chief Data Strategy Officer for MNC Saatchi London, uh, you're all about making data useful, right? <laughs> I think Correct. I read that on your yeah. LinkedIn somewhere. Um, but look, where do you see the big, biggest opportunity for marketers in the context of this new data and privacy-centric landscape? There's, there's lots of lots of opportunity, but I think it's probably going to be around first party data and probably really closely connected to that um, personalization that comes off the back of having more of that data to work with and play with and do interesting things with. Absolutely. I think first party data is, is certainly key. So I'm keen to hear, you know, are there any changes that you've had to make internally as an agency to sort of prepare for this future? Uh, agencies, they're always in change, aren't they? Well, that's uh, true. <laughs> but yes, yes. Uh, so there's been things we have had to do around ethical use, ethics and understanding. So uh, we've always had policies around data and how it's used, but we've had to update those and revise those and make plans to make sure that they can be updated on a regular and ongoing basis. Going hand in hand with that, we've also had to do quite a bit of uh, work on training. It's quite difficult to understand sometimes some of the rules and the words and some things are, are quite explicit and very easily defined and it can be worked out as a here's a thing you can do or you cannot do but there are definitely parts of working with data where it's a bit unknown or it's a bit unsure it's very easy to fall into a world where you're not clear whether you should or shouldn't be using it and so training has really helped across a number of different roles and departments to um, give people the confidence to work with data in more ways than they wouldn't have done before. Um, you know, I think that training aspect is really important. So internally, as an agency, you've made some changes. Um, I guess in terms of your clients then, how are you supporting them and helping them, I guess, structure their business differently? There's been a change in the relationship between clients and agencies and clients taking more things in-house that perhaps they would have put out to a dedicated supplier or an agency partner. And what that has changed is the dynamic of how you work together. And it's been much less of a sort of baton past. We're going to, client's going to brief an agency on a project to use some data and the agency's going to return with an answer uh, and we're going to agree or disagree. It's been much more collaborative. It's, that has been a really big change. So agreeing up front, what is, what is the actual problem or the hypothesis that we're, we're looking at? How might data be, be useful? What data do we need? Who do we need to be involved in, in making sense of that? and then working out its, its actual use and rollout. Um, what does it mean for communications? What does it mean for how this data can be useful to help drive growth? It's been a much more collaborative process than uh, I can ever recall. So the number of different departments and roles and different people who need to be involved in decision making, it's generally slower and more difficult when you have lots of people who need to come to an agreement on mm. something rather than it just staying in one person's mind. It doesn't matter if you've got the right answer if you can't all agree on it and make that decision and move with it as a business. And uh, that's definitely been uh, uh, an area where agencies have been able to help. So to identify early on in a project, do we need to bring in someone from your legal team or do we need to bring in someone from a different ops team? So agencies have been helping and we find it's been much easier to bring people in, much easier to, to raise questions and to help and uh, to work out the plans and the guiding principles together to hopefully get a, a better answer and everyone on one page. It's been a big change. Look, that's really, really helpful. Mm -hmm. And again, I come back to what you were saying at the start, you know, about the importance of first party data. Mm -hmm. So I'd be really keen to hear, you know, how are you helping clients use that to create really brilliant customer experiences? So I'm going to let you all into a big secret, and that is that the first party data isn't really a new thing. It's been, it's been around, as a, just not with those terms, for, for years and years and years. It's anything that you can do to understand that customer. And that could be as simple as asking them some survey questions and using that information. And that first party data could help create some really insightful um, ideas and strategies that could go on to change the course of the decisions that uh, the brand or the marketeer might make. It can also be really useful in loosely what we called personalization before, but I think 
there's some sub themes to to that so the way that it tends to come about practical use is you can either change the targeting to make it uh, more refined in some way so you can change the time the date uh, the particular channel or the format based on what you've learned and captured as that that piece of, of data uh, or you can go through building relevance and so changing messaging and the wonder of that is that you get not necessarily wholly more creative answers but you get a much more resonant message or piece of, of work going out when you've been able to use first party data in that way. Lots of brands have done this successfully. Um, sometimes it's quite uh, fun. You've probably seen lots of quiz, like lots of brands, e-commerce brands, that you sign up, you get a quiz. You know, what's my, what's my favorite coffee flavor? Or what's my skin type? Or a gift finder? Or what mood do I want? All of those things are actually a little mechanic that helps provide a little piece of first party data that the brand can go on to use downstream and building that relationship with that customer. Yeah, and really, really useful as well advice. So then how are you supporting clients to leverage data-driven performance marketing to drive efficiency? There is sadly only so much money to go around, isn't there? Uh, and growth targets, they always go up. They never, they never go down, do they? They only ever go, ever go one, one way. way. Uh, and the only way to, to really do that is by thinking about uh, effectiveness and about efficiency. Uh, and that means you need to be able to, to do more in terms of your conversion rates through your funnel. And that really comes from a, a process of iterative testing. So we've been working uh, across channels, but particularly our digital media channels, to have a really robust and defined uh, step, uh, step phased process to that testing. Uh, and more recently, we've been experimenting with trialing um, new uh, AI-based tools. It's largely been used to, to take the better performing pieces and create new versions of those, right. new adaptations, new versions of your top pieces. Uh, and then to see if we can find a new magical version. And there's also been a little bit that's been helping to reduce some fraud, which uh, net net overall helps uh, efficiency. Well, just sticking on the, the topic of AI, you know, are you testing or learning with privacy centric AI, you know, to drive this effectiveness? Is there anything, you know, any success stories that you can share with us? So clients are at all sorts of different stages in their understanding because it's such a new and emerging space. So there's lots of testing and learning uh, underway uh, with clients. Part of that is um, just sharing. Uh, and understanding new knowledge, new new tools. There's lots of see lots of things available, uh, and so part of that is just bringing them up to speed with with what is available. But once you get beyond that, then it's actually about finding real practical use cases and learnings from the back of that. So we've been doing all sorts all sorts of things with uh, with text and with image, and uh, trying to do it in a as responsible uh, way as we can. So um, we've been helping uh, a leading uh, drinks company uh, in some way shape or form to to go through just some some simple use case testing is can we make the copy in this better can we improve uh, and iterate over this copy and the headlines and the call to actions to see if we can drive higher conversion and off the back of that can we improve the overall performance and efficiency uh, of some of the life cycle uh, communications as they go out uh, through those contact points for another which is a bit more of a retailer uh, it's much more around um, digital uh, journey touch point and journey mapping uh, and can we find and refine uh, better performing pieces, better targeting opportunities. Uh, can we change uh, a word or an image uh, based off all the wonderful data that we've already captured and worked through uh, with those teams to see if we can, again, drive the overall effectiveness up of their growth program. Um, so that's, that's another. Another one is um, responsible. Now, it's, it's obviously, as I said, it's a fast moving space, but we, we set uh, some guidelines and principles for um, uh, for ourselves, but also with, with our clients, um, to at least try and guide us whilst some of these things become. Uh, we will sort of work our way through what this new, new world means. So um, the first thing is, is around really high quality inputs over outputs. So thinking really importantly about what you're actually putting into uh, a generative or a, a text-based AI model. Uh, and thinking about what you get out. And you're much better to put higher quality uh, input in uh, and to then look at and review with common sense what, what, what comes out. Um, there's a second piece about obviously don't copy other people. Don't, don't take other people's information and use that to train it uh, or do something if you don't have the rights. Copyright law still applies, lo and behold. Uh, <laughs> the reality is um, you know, be inspired, of course, just as you would with any creative process, but don't, don't rip other people off. Um, also, that goes the other way. If you own the rights to something, take advantage of the fact that you own it 
And then uh, another third piece, really important piece, is to, to make sure that you, you, everything you do, you protect yourself. So you've got to think about privacy, you've got to think about avoiding any form of data leakage and making sure you're using the, the right things in your sort of day-to-day -day as the agency and with your client teams that you're working with. The last thing you want is someone to inadvertently make a mistake and there's, there's some very straightforward ways that, that people can uh, use the right technology to, to avoid that. Now, looking, I guess, a little bit more to the future and the industry mm. overall, um, you know, where do you see the biggest approach for businesses to embrace a privacy-first approach to marketing? There's going to be lots of big opportunities in how you bring these things together. And we've, we've probably mentioned a few of them already. In and around first-party data and personalization definitely is going to uh, be uh, the key end benefit for, for the brand. Getting to that, um, I think the, the opportunity is going to be in thinking about how you reorganize and how you re-think um, through some of the processes that you might be doing as an agency and with your clients and with your uh, media partners in the round. Because I think some of those processes are going to get quicker, some of those are going to uh, get faster in terms of the perhaps not having so many people in, in some of those steps. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think being mindful of how you go about and open-minded into that opportunity I think will um, will help brands. Um, and then I guess like, in terms of your role, you know, Chief Data Strategy yes. Officer, how has that changed? Like, have you had to learn new skill sets? Is it, how's that evolved? Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it uh, should always be learning. You should always, all, all, always be learning, always be hungry. Um, this, this space in particular, so data and marketing technology uh, and how people work with them, it, it is full of um, words and lingo and words and the, the, sometimes complex and don't necessarily have natural human meanings and so one things that we're really it's partly part of the, the training piece but one thing that I'm really really keen on and it's why and he said making data useful but to be able to talk about what it is that you're doing in really plain straightforward language we're using data to learn about people uh, we are then going to use this really smart model which is going to predict what people may or may not do and then we're going to test changing the words in this advert uh, in, in that sense and that that's a very straightforward way of explaining it but when you talk to marketeers and teams around those things, there'll be acronyms, there'll be all sorts of things. And it'd be quite hard to decipher what that really means. So one of the things that um, I found we have to really, really work on, I know I have to really, really work on this, is making sure that we, we, when we're speaking to marketeers and to, to people, uh, we're not necessarily speaking to machines and to uh, uh, robots. So that, that's definitely one thing that's changed. The other thing is I think the, um, the, the ability to, to work and sort of facilitate broader conversations amongst different people. I think in the past, the role was to sort of, to officiate in some way. Yeah. Uh, and uh, from up, let's say from up high, but to pass down decisions based on your, your depth of, of, of knowledge. But actually, it's much more now about working um, together with people and with different teams and different functions to find the path forward. Uh, and that can take into account what are, what are we doing from a, a privacy point of view? What are we doing to make sure this is really in the customer's best interest? Do we know if this is actually going to be driving commercial growth or not? I, all, all of those things need to somehow uh, be resolved and that's not going to come from just one person's point of view. That's going to come from working the answer out together. Yeah, together again, collaboration, love it. Um, so in terms of future initiatives mm. or areas of focus, mm. are there any anything particular that you're really interested in? So generative AI and how that's going to change uh, again. Um, yeah. um, things like image generation, text generation, but the, the actual steps that people do when they're in their roles between the client and the agency and their brands, that is behaviorally changing at the moment. What needs to happen and is, is starting to happen in terms of initiatives is there's been there's a number of um, bodies forming in and around the responsible use of some of those behaviors so how do advertisers and brands and clients work with those new steps in in a responsible way there's been a few different sort of policy statements there's been a few different things that have been drafted but no one's come to a collective agreement and maybe it won't be a collective agreement but a clear set of guidelines uh, I think is, is going to be a really important thing to, uh, to get to. Uh, I'm excited to be part of some of those. That's, that's just really great. So I guess then if you were going to maybe leave us with a few words of mm. actionable advice based on what we've discussed yeah. today to inspire marketers there yeah. to take back to their business, yeah. um, you know, to ensure data mm. privacy is, is sort yeah. of core DNA, what would that advice be? Two things. One is to go and talk to your customers. And actually agencies should make sure they, they do that. But, and that's, that's not something that just your customer experience department does or your customer support 
does. That's, that's everyone. Everyone should be out talking to customers um, and listening and, and understanding because then you, hit, you hear what they really think and what they really feel. And I think that's really important in processing how you start to apply some of the decisions you might be making about how you use data and in turn what that means for privacy and how you work your rules and your, your um, logic in and around your, your data. So that, that as a piece I think is uh, really important. Uh, a second piece, which is a bit more sort of internally focused in, in an organisation, is to get behind the idea, if you can, that the data analytics um, and data with um, storytelling is, is a really important uh, skill set to learn and to master because it creates greater influence. And that, as a thing, isn't isn't the thing that just the data department does or the insight team does. That is a thing for everyone to be able to work on and to master because if you can find meaning in that data and then you can tell a nice story with it, it will become more memorable and it will help the organisation make really smart, better decisions in a way that they wouldn't have otherwise. So those would be the two things, I think. Yeah, that's, I think, really, really, really good advice. So talk to your customers. But, you know, if someone, uh, marketing leaders, were to go and do one thing, like right now, what would that be? I am going to go and say, go and try your product with a customer. I know, that's that's right. there's some repetition. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, that's what I would do, yeah. There you go, there you yeah. have it. Well, thank you so much, yeah. James, for your time. No, thank you. <laughs> Thanks for watching, and you can catch other episodes in this series on diversity and creativity on the Think With Google YouTube page and on the Drum TV.